That sounds it's, like self-hatred and justification of white supremacy. And let me just say this, because this congresswoman is a wonderful human being, but, but, but when you disrespect Kamala Harris by saying you will call her whatever you want, I know you don't intend it to be that way. That's the history and legacy of white disregard for the humanity of black people. Oh, so now you're calling me racist. I didn't say, that, I just said you weren't a racist. That is complete no, You don't yes. have to intend racism no, to no, accomplish No, 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 you are it. intending that Your I am racist. Your disrespect of Kamala Harris that is, is part and parcel of a disrespect. It's offensive and it's Why can't you just, why can't you, am I calling you a racist? I'm telling you what the practice is racist. You are, you are. Why can't you just hear what I'm saying? Let me get, let me get in your No, what's disgusting is your disrespect of her. Professor. This gentleman said, you know what, I didn't you know, what's know her disgusting name, to he's women to do is it. her disrespect of women. She doesn't know what a woman is. And if, if 25 years ago, White I women became, don't have the ability to tell black women who, who paid the price of blood to make this country what it is to tell them they're not real women. 25 they years ago, for your baby 25 years ago, I became humanity. the first woman to graduate from the Citadel of the Military College of South Carolina. I so fought my way right. through it. So pronounce her name right. Let me actually get. And right. Kamala Harris. If Kamala, I were Kamala, a man, you said it without calling you Nancy. Come on, Kamala. It's it's Kamala. Kamala. You're doing this on purpose, Congress. That's disrespectful. If, you can't expect people to if, respect if your service if you don't respect her. If a man walked that stage 25 years ago, she would have said it. She would have taken that achievement away from women. Oh, Miguel, Miguel, Miguel. Oh, Michael, Michael, Michael. What's going on, America? Welcome to Kevin's Corner, where I try to make some sense out of nonsense. Before we get into this video, I need y'all to do me a favor. Hit that like button, share my videos. Please make sure you subscribe. Make sure your notification buttons are turned on to all. Subscribe to my alternative channel, just in case YouTube give me the slip or something. You'll know how to find me. Don't forget to check me out with all the podcasts and follow me on Rumble in the Junko. All the links are listed below. If you want to donate to my channel, feel free. Those links are below as well. Now, with no further ado, Welcome to my party, we're just getting started. What's going on, America Care from Kevin's Corner, where I try to make sense out of nonsense. And uh, did y'all hear that shite? Um, so here we got uh, a race baiter. Michael, uh, I guess, Dyson. And he was uh, out there on CNN doing what race baiters do. Uh, they race bait. And they look for opportunities instead of discussing policies and trying to debate those. They look for reasons to shield themselves from any type of criticism or to protect the folks that they pretty much are completely loyal to for nothing, which is the Democrat Party. But they will protect them at all costs. And if that means you got to distract somebody with some accusations of racism because they cannot pronounce or did not pronounce Kamala Harris's name correctly, even though we got montages of all kind of Democrats and stuff, including Joe Biden, not pronouncing her name correctly. But nobody was stopping uh, any of those people like they tried to do Nancy. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't stop them. They didn't talk about that white supremacy and that's a white trope and all of that stuff. So did you see all of that crap that he put in there? And then when she said, oh, so you calling me a racist, huh? You calling her, no, I ain't calling you a racist. Yes, you are. You're calling her a racist um, kind of discreetly, not even discreetly. It's right out in your face because see, when you describe characteristics and behaviors of racism and you assign those characteristics to someone, then it's easy to infer that this person is racist. That's like saying, you know what, I ain't saying you are a, you know, a racist, but you do a lot of racist things and say a lot of racist stuff. Only racists would do those things. So he tries to get away with that, but however, it backfired. Now, I tried to stay away from this one. I tried to let this one go. I said, you know what, that's not my business. You know, I ain't gonna get involved with that until this dude showed up on a view. So let's recap what happened to get his butt in this bit of a pickle. I'd like to also enter into the record a screenshot of a text message I received from the uh, esteemed professor from Vanderbilt, Michael Eric Dyson, uh -oh. after my CNN interview, begged me for photos. In this text, he says, after calling me a uh, racist on CNN, Shh, don't tell anybody, we look good together, and sent me a kissy emoji. Without and objection. The guy, the guy says, order. I'm gorgeous in all these photos. I don't think he's that bent out of shape on how anyone pronounces Kamala. Whoa! Now, did y'all hear that? This man right there got in her inbox and don't tell nobody that that. That sounds like somebody who's up to something. But not to mention, as she concluded with saying, I don't think he's worried about race and all of that stuff. I don't think so either. Because like the Democrats and all of the folks on the left, 
They all scream outrage and they all swearing down. They are power to the people, soul, brother and sister, number one. But yet at the same time, they will hang out with a whole bunch of white folks. They will date white folks. I mean, look at Kamala Harris. She got her white husband, Ilhan Omar, white husband, uh, AOC, white boyfriend. Um, all of the soul sister number ones and the soul brothers number one, uh, for some reason, off the set, they got a whole different behavior, whole set of rules that I'm thinking, wait a minute now, just a minute ago, by watching that, I would have thought you would have jumped on, on her and start smacking her around and saying, you need to pay for all the years of atrocities. Now you're talking about, we look good together and stuff like that. What's up with that? Not to mention, those aren't the type of text messages that someone would be texting someone that was that racist, that insensitive, can't even pronounce Kamala Harris's name right. You wouldn't be texting that person nice things, would you? So she comes out and says this. And this dude, of course, tries to come out and convince everybody that, no, man, I would, it wasn't even like that. I wasn't trying to holler at her. <laughs> man, what's wrong with this chick? So now the race baiter, instead of talking about how much he thinks she's beautiful and you know, all that stuff, huh? now all of a sudden he's going back to racism. So let's check this out. Here's his response to convince all of us that he wasn't trying to get at her in her inbox. Hey, my friends, Michael Eric Dyson here. Uh, I just want to clear something up, uh, a vicious untruth and rumor that's being spread by Congresswoman Nancy Mace claiming I was trying to hit on her. So I'm trying to figure this out. So this is our complete text exchange that she says proves I was trying to hit on her. Let's see um, it. We were on CNN together. She was vicious. She was nasty. <laughs> She refused to call Kamala Harris by her right name. We had a bitter exchange about that. Well, first of all, she wasn't the one attacking y'all. Y'all attacked her. Y'all were more vicious than she was. She was defensive, not vicious. These folks decided, since she's talking about the precious chameleon Harris, which is garbage, um, we can't let her get too far into that. So we got to stop her because we caught one little thing that we can define as racism, which is she called her Kamala and I call her Kamala and many other people call her Kamala but as a trained race baiter okay you catch anything that you can and make it into racism even if it's not so of course all of that attacking and how you disrespecting a black woman and and, 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 and a, a white woman shouldn't even be allowed to tell a black woman what, what a woman is and all this stuff these dudes right here are the biggest sellouts ever black race baiters to get out there and race bait for Democrats and liberals make me sick. Okay. But uh, here he is trying to tell us that there's a misunderstanding. So he's going to clear it up. Okay. Because she was vicious and nasty because she didn't say Kamala Harris's name uh, correctly. She claims uh, in the interview that I called her racist when I went out of my way to say she wasn't a racist. While saying that everything she was doing was racist. I ain't calling you a racist. Okay. Uh, but everything you're saying and doing is racist. There you go. I guess uh, she's supposed to take that some other way. When you get out there and assigning characteristics and behaviors of racism, and then at the same time, you're trying to insult them uh, to their face by saying, but I ain't calling you a racist, but everything you're saying is racist. I said, you're a wonderful woman. Um, but let me say this to you, because I know you probably didn't understand this or mean it, but when you call Kamala Harris out of her name, that is perpetuating a legacy of inequality and of white subordination uh, of black people. Oh, so you called me a racist. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I mean, why is everything so uh, power to the people, soul brother number one, and uh, the Asiatic black man, and you disrespecting and a bunch of bullshiggity? Now, understand, if this woman was all of that and she was vicious and nasty, why would you even be texting her? See, once again, you're fake. All this race baiting, all of this stuff that you see them get on TV and act like, you know, everything is a racial issue, it's all garbage. Same thing with Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. During a debate, Joe Biden was a segregationist. But all of a sudden now, Kamala Harris was his vice president. How did she overlook all of that racism, that segregationism? She overlooked that to become vice president. All of a sudden, she's talking about, we did it, yo, we did it. But uh, this guy gets out there, attacks her, says she's disrespecting the black woman and this and all that and this and that. But uh, you're beautiful and we look good together. Hmm. Now, any brother knows that this cat is bullshit. So she's looking for some reason to try to exploit the situation. This is the text exchange uh, I sent her. Uh, Abby Phillip, the host of the show, suggested we take pictures. I said, let's take a picture. She said, Abby said, when you um, 
um, post it, then tag me too, and then um, we'll have fun. Because the whole point was two bipolar opposites, Michael Eric Dyson on one side, Nancy Mace on the other. So I sent her and she said, great pick. Bipolar opposites? <laughs> Maybe polar opposites, but he's confused because see, he got a wife. He's supposed to be a preacher. He's trying to explain, and he's going into a lot of details uh, to explain this one. See, because he knows the average brother uh, is sitting back going, "I have, I got to give him my Uncle Ron look." Like you say, he was trying to just be nice, huh? That's all it was. Uh, now he's talking about uh, she's trying to exploit the issue. No, 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 no. You tried to exploit the issue when she called. Chameleon Kamala Harris, Kamala. And then what did y'all do? Took advantage of that opportunity to call her racist. But now you're mad because you got all in her inbox. But let's continue hearing him scramble to try to give an excuse. So I sent her and she said, great pick. Uh, and I said, shh, don't tell anybody. We look good together. No, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Shh. Now, I'm going to tell y'all what he's really doing. See, I got to break it down. I got to become, of course, uh, the relationship slash I'm trying to get with you expert. When you start saying things like, shh, don't tell anybody we look good together. What you're really doing is fishing. You're throwing it out. You're throwing the hook out. You're seeing if you can get a little nibble on that bait. You're wanting to see if she's going to be like, yeah, we do look kind of good together. Because I guarantee you, if she'd have said, yeah, we do look good together, he would have went further. But let's continue because apparently he's just being nice. With a uh, laughing face uh, and a kissy face. Uh-oh, what's up with that? What's up with that? Now, this man right here is saying he would just be dropping kissy faces out there like that. Now, I wonder, what does that mean? We know what the kissy face means, man. I mean, we live in a postmodern society where all of our emotions can be summed up in some stupid little cartoon uh, icon or whatever, an emoji. So you know what these things mean. Uh, you thumbs up. Then when you start going with the wink, uh-huh, or the kiss, all of that, the hearts. Now you're starting to, you're starting to fish a little bit. Now you're starting to express what you really feel and how you feel. So he just threw that out there and uh, now he wants to try to make it seem like it's just, you know, normal. I mean, I, I ain't throw it out there. I ain't mean nothing about it. It's just something I always do. I mean, it, well, I don't even know why you're tripping. Why are you reading into stuff? And my point was, shh, don't tell anybody because we are bipolar opposites. You're on one side of the spectrum and I'm on the other side of the spectrum. And she said, ha, 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 ha. And I said, well, your gorgeousness makes the photo, so there's that. Why do you need to say that? Why do you need to say that? Why do you come out and you, first of all, say, we look good together? You drop the kissy face out there. Notice that he drops the kissy face out there. And all she does is she gives him nothing to bite. She didn't give him no positive feedback that would encourage him to go further or to make him think that, Oh, she feeling me. She gave him the basic standard, ha, 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 like you so funny, but that's it. And every guy knows that. You know when a woman wants you to kind of continue with the flirting versus I'm cutting it off. Let a brother go up to somebody who got a boyfriend and he's like, so, you know, you got a boyfriend? If she says, well, I mean, you know, I got a, I mean, it's something like that. I mean, yeah, I, I got a man, but sometimes we be <laughs> having problems. What she's saying is continue talking to me. If you keep saying, you know, the right stuff, I might just, you know, put you in the chamber for later, just in case, just in case I blow out a flat, then I'll have a spare, see? Yeah, but he also knows the difference when he asked the woman, you got a boyfriend? And she goes, yes. And it's an exclamation point. No follow up. No, but none of that. Yeah. Yes. He gets it. He's like, ooh, she ain't giving me nothing to, to clench on to. She gave me the code. Yes. And then staring at me like, I hope you understand what that yes meant. That's what that ha 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 was. But what does he do? He goes even further. Uh -huh, it's your beauty and stuff that makes things. Why are you saying that? I mean, where's your wife? Why are you giving these type of compliments to somebody who's not your wife? Now, every dude knows the game. All right. I mean, he's not fooling anybody. Uh, he can't cover all of this up by bringing up racism and calling her this and this and that. Just keep it real, bruh. You wanted to holler at her and it backfired. Now you out there backtracking. Uh, and I, a little smiley face. Again, I'm just saying that trying to be nice to her in the belief 
and the effort that if I'm nice to her, she might respond positively and then I can open up a door for some shenanigans. Just be honest, man. And again, I, I just trying to be nice to her. So what you're doing is you're saying things that you can walk back and just pretend that it was innocuous. It was innocuous. See, it, it's kind of like going up to a woman at the, at the job, you know, and uh, you're like, hey, hey, Denise, uh, can you hand me that that pencil? What? You know, the pencil over there, that nice, long pencil. And she's like, what are you saying? Nothing. I just asked, can you give me the pencil? And she's like, no, 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 wait a minute. It's how you said it. Uh, you didn't say it like, uh, can you give me that long pencil over there? You said it kind of like, you know, you got that long pencil over there. And now all of a sudden, it seems weird. But if somebody call you into the office and say, hey, were you trying to hit on her? What were you doing? What did you mean by that? Then you can just say, man, dude, all I did was just ask for the pencil. I asked for the pencil. But you're hoping, though, when you ask for that pencil like that, she would go. <laughs> so what you mean you want that long pencil? You know what I'm saying? I That's what he was hoping would happen. But instead, she responded like, what? What are you? Why are you asking me like that? Oh, I, I ain't mean nothing. I was just asking for the pencil. When you really wanted a different reaction. So now watch this dude try to justify what he said to her when all he ends up doing is showing that he tries this same tactic with everybody. He's the guy that winks at every girl that comes in the club. He's the guy that got the same pickup line with everybody. Uh, the, you know what? Uh, you must be tired. What? Yeah, because you've been running through my mind all day long. Ugh. That's what he is. So now he's going to explain. Hey, man, don't read too much into that because I do this to every woman. And I prove that we don't have any bitter consequences from our fracas on television that we can be relatively kind to each other. And I'm being nice to her. There's no hitting on you. Her. These are other people that I interacted with recently, my friends. Some of them. Uh, my friend Allison. Uh, I said, nice, you look gorgeous. Look out, Texas, here she comes, talking about that. Nell Painter, a world-renowned historian. On her Instagram, I posted, after she posted about, she's a Mary Ellen von uh, der Heiden Fellow in Letters of the American Academy in Berlin. On, in public, I said, gorgeous and brilliant all at once. Um, a heart with, um, a, 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 heart, a face that's smiling with hearts and a kissy face, right? I said, keep up the great work. Then there is my friend Terry, who I was giving tickets to for the Democratic National Convention. I said, you know I can if I will. Everybody and their mama want these tickets for today. You look gorgeous as always. Well, I congratulated her on the interview she did with Kamala Harris, and then on another interview, saving people of color, saying people of color are eating cats, that's racism. I was quoting her. I said, thank you, Dana Bash. Besides being brilliant and courageous, you also look gorgeous. And then I put um, uh, a, a power hand and a smiley, uh, a face with, with, with hearts. I ain't hitting on Nancy Mace. Now, that's how desperate he is to try to get out of this pickle because he ends up exposing the fact that this dude has inappropriate language and behaviors with a whole bunch of different women. Now, if you're his wife, and you are listening to this. One, you're saying, wait a minute, so why are you complimenting and flattering all of these women? You do understand women respond to flattery. You're hoping to get a reaction. You're hoping that somebody will take the bait. That's what you're doing. And yet you're disguising it as, I'm just being nice and friendly. No, if a woman is doing that to a guy, a guy will wanna know more about what she means by that. If your wife was at work and every time she's like, Man, you been working out? Boy, look at you. I see you. I see you. Oh, you know what? You look so good with that bald head. I love a man with a beard. You're so gorgeous. That guy is going to be like, why are you always commenting on my appearance and how attractive I am? What are you really fishing for? What do you want me to say? Are you hitting on me? And that's what he's doing. He's saying all these things to these different women. But yet he, he defaults back to, I'm just being nice. And look, man, this is universal. He just messed up and tried to holler at the wrong person after he just got done offending that person by calling him a racist. And so now, in conclusion, here he is. What is he going to do? Call her a racist? <laughs> your attempt is sad and sorry, but your bigoted racist attempt will not succeed 
Ain't nobody trying to holler at you. And if you're that desperate that you need a black man to holler at you, I'm not the one to do it. There are plenty on your side who can do that, ma'am, but you got the wrong brother in me. Again, vicious, misleading, lying, distorting, and trying to pretend as if somebody's trying to holler at you when that's the furthest thing from my mind. Mm. My mistake was being gracious to you of trying to say, oh my God, we are opposites, but we can still be gracious to one another. I can still compliment you. I can still say nice things to you. There was no attempt to do anything but to be gracious to you. But you have proved to be what I said you weren't, a vicious white supremacist racist who is incapable of accepting the generosity and kindness of a black man. You are a sorry six. Oh, yes. I think I can smell short. Did y'all hear all that shite? Now, see, understand what that was was overkill. It was overkill. He went and litigated the whole thing. He went back through uh, text messages and, and emails and stuff with everybody else. Uh, he gave us a whole rundown and justified why he said it. But notice he never said why he sent that kissy emoji. He didn't say why he did that. Uh huh. And uh, why is he calling this racist white woman as he defines her now? It's beautiful. Not to mention, look at this picture. Now, that picture right there, does that look like he's uh, going, ugh, I'm being tainted by whiteness. This white woman all up in my arms and stuff, got my arm all around her waist. This dude's full of crap, and every dude listening to him should be going, mm -hmm. However, this guy right here decides to take his case to The View, and that's what made me have to come off the bench on this story. Uh, because he knows he's looking real bad, but he decides I'm going to go into a safe territory and I'm going to go ahead and vomit up some more stuff to try to make her look bad. And these people will accept it because it's Donald Trump. She's a Republican. I could say whatever I want to say about her, uh, as long as I can connect her to Trump, long as she's a Republican and long as she's a white lady. And I can say anything about her and you women on here who normally would go, this man right here obviously tried to holler at her. Uh, then now he's backtracking it. Uh, he overstepped his boundaries and all of this stuff. Now, all of a sudden, they give him a platform for him to look like he's the victim. So because we live in the crazy year of 2024, she then later accused you of sending her flirty text, which she entered into the congressional record. Can you clear this up for us, Professor? Absolutely. Well, first of all, it's great to be here with you wonderful women. Yes. Um, the thing is, is that look, let's look at a little background. Mm -hmm. I'm a preacher, so I know sin, my own and others. So <laughs> I'm a preacher. Now, look what he's doing. He is building his case. He's building a strong man. He's saying that, first of all, I'm going to put all these things up here to try to make everybody look at me uh, in a good light. And all of a sudden, these titles and these accolades that I'm giving myself should exclude my motive. OK, it should justify me telling y'all that I have an innocent motive. I'm clear. I didn't do nothing. My heart was pure because I'm a preacher. What else? Right. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. I saw Whoopi yesterday talk about the fact in regard to Janet Jackson, people make mistakes and we have to yeah. acknowledge that. Number two, as a professor, I've seen things evolve over space and time. What you could say 20 years ago, can't say today. No. Yeah. Not because you're suddenly wrong, but the temper of the times has yeah. changed. Right. So if you acknowledge a woman's beauty that is a power imbalance, there's a problem there. Now, all he's doing is getting up there and trying to academy himself through this whole thing. Yeah, and I'm a professor. See, I'm, a, you know, into all this stuff. And I can tell you right now, this the new, uh, the, the, the psychology says that, and we live in a time where the cancer culture, and you got the carefulness and this and that. He's trying to explain away what his real motive was. But I can see through all of this crap. So I don't care if you're a preacher. I don't care if you're trying to throw up your PhD or whatever you have. You still try to holler at her. But peer to peer, a different story. Still cautious, but different. And then thirdly, let's look at the politics. We're living in a toxic culture mm -hmm. where there's a cancel culture gotcha. Where there's a culture where if you mispronounce somebody's name, you all of a sudden become a white nationalist or a racist and racist tropes and all of that stuff. We're living in that type of culture. So you focus on race. Then we realize that you really aren't serious about racism and race baiting and all that stuff. It's just a grift because right after you try to holler at her, then when she rejects it and exposes you, what do you do? You go right back to race bait. That's your default. The reason that, that you expose me for what I am, which is a creep and I'm trying to holler at you and trying to pretend that my motives are pure and innocent, but I got busted is because you're a white uh, racist. That's why. That's why. We're not trying to elevate, we're trying to eviscerate. Oh, so God. when it comes to Nancy Mace, you see I tried to be nice. Oh, to the that's woman. what it was. I, I said, you you're a wonderful woman. I lied. I then said, but 
But I tried to be nice to her. Yeah. And then even when I pointed out to her what the repetition of the misnaming of Kamala Harris would do, she got defensive. Oh, you're calling me a racist. No. And you never did. I, was I never did. Yeah. I you see these dummies on The View defending him? And they all know he's, he's, he's bullcrapping. Anybody with common sense should know this guy's full of bullcrap. But these women love the Democrat Party so much. And they love, you know, Kamala Harris so much. And they love you know, their party more than they really love women's rights and Me Too. All of that stuff is bullcrap when it comes to the left. All the Me Too goes out the window, all of the sexism uh, and all of the offenses and all of the, you know what, you overstepped your boundaries and all the toxic masculinity. If it comes from their side, they downplay that mess, they justify it and blame the victim. So Mancy Mace puts out the, the text messages. She's the one that he tried to holler at. But now all of a sudden, what are they doing? Siding with him because one, he's black. Two, he's a Democrat. And three, he's getting out there trying to wordsmith himself through this conundrum he put himself in. I think Shakespeare said the lady doth protest too much. Yeah. Or in the hood, we say a hit dog will holler. And in the hood, we say uh, a nasty dog. Atomic dog. Why must I feel like that? Why must I chase the white lady? Nothing but the dog in you. Talking about some a hit dog will holler. So the point is that, that this woman has now depended upon, like her inspiration, Donald Trump, a racist trope. Yeah. The black brute seeks That's the right. innocent white woman. Here we go. So now I'm seeking lasciviously to approach her. I didn't call her names. I acknowledge her humanity. And I'll say one final thing to all of these white Christians, and she's one of them. What? The, the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name no, he didn't. will humble themselves and pray. No, he didn't try to end it with quoting scriptures. <laughs> This bootleg, jelly back, sawed off, funky preacher got the nerve to try to bring up a scripture starting off though with racism, the white Christians. This dude right here is the worst, man. Just drop the preacher title. You don't need that. But that's just one more layer of protection. See, that shields him from criticism. So now what is he going to try to do? Surely I can't be the, 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 the guilty one here. Because look, man, I'm talking about scriptures, plus I'm going to hit y'all with a little bit of white guilt, and I'm going to do like the Bible doesn't tell us to do, which is separate Christians based on race. White Christians, unbelievable, man. What church does he preach at, man? <laughs> so I could ride past and throw mud at him. And turn their face to God and turn away from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. Unbelievable. And then I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. Right. They have not forgiven themselves. White Christians hate themselves for the past wrongs that have been done. And I'm here as a loving Christian to say, let's grapple with that past, mm -hmm. acknowledge the historic legacy of, of supremacy, don't deny it, don't erase it, don't eviscerate it, mm -hmm. don't remove it from the history books, confront it, and then when you forgive yourselves, we can go forward. I am a human being. Have I made mistakes? Absolutely. Have I said the wrong thing to people that I wish I could take back? Absolutely. But I am a child of God, and that means I don't have to be perfect to be useful, and I don't have to be unflawed to shine. Well, guys, there you have it. That might have been the biggest bunch of shite that I've heard in a long time. That guy straight tried to bring up Christianity and quote some scriptures and then talk about white folks haven't forgiven themselves. First of all, it ain't up to white folks or anybody to forgive themselves. God forgives you, okay? And you gotta ask for it. Secondly, as a preacher, what are you doing dividing Christianity and Christians up into white, black, or whatever? That's what I wanna know. Um, and then got the nerve to try to close out with, and uh, if you, uh, the scripture totally out of context. Uh, if you, you know, well, God will heal the land if you repent and call on his name, God, all of that crap. This guy right here is a false teacher, false prophet. If you're not a real sold out preacher or, or Christian, don't wear it on your sleeve like that. Don't use it for politics. Don't use it for, you know, uh, race division. And definitely don't use it to cover up your own sin. This guy is the guy that if he gets caught, would say, you know what? He without sin cast the first stone. Dude, you got caught butt naked in a, a brothel. So, well, you know what? Those that live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones and uh, he without sin. And you know what? We all fall short of the glory of God. Just own it. Now, these people on The View might pretend that he has a legitimate, uh, you know, case, but 
Folks that are real knows that this guy is full of shite because if she would have hollered back at him, if she would have hit him with the... You know, what would you mean we look good together? Uh, you know, you're so crazy. We do look kind of good together. That dude would have been all over it. All over it. So I hope that uh, he's uh, convinced himself of that because he sure ain't convinced me. And I also hope that he convinced his old lady because I'm pretty sure she probably is like, you better get your butt out there on somebody's show and clear this mess up. Do all the race beating you got to do, but you better clear it up. And no more, uh, die. you look good and you're beautiful. Everybody, everybody's beautiful. I'm saying it to everybody because I'm hoping for a dragnet effect. <laughs> Throw it out there and see what I can catch. Yeah, this guy is trash. Now, God bless y'all. God bless America. I couldn't let that one go when he brought up Christianity and white folks need to repent. Unbelievable.